Let us go to the second epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. The second epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ are around in us, so are our consolation also bound through Christ. Now, if we are inflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same suffering which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation, or a hope for your steadfast. <clears throat> because we know that as you are partakers of the suffering, so also you will partake of the consolation. For we don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia. That we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yet we had a sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. He delivered us from so great death and does deliver us in whom we trust he will deliver us that he will also help me together in prayer for us that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift grant to us through many for our boasting is this the testimony of our conscience that we are conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity, and not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God and more abundantly toward you. <clears throat> For we are not writing any other things to you than what you read or understand. Now I trust you, you will understand even to the end, as also you have understood as in part that we are your boast, as you also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Up to 57 year A.D., Paul was in Ephesus and God worked through him through miraculous powers and he did majestic signs and miracles so that thousands believed and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ was preached and proclaimed in all Asia and why he was in Ephesus And one or two years before that, he was in Corinth. And he remembered them and sent them the first epistle. I thank the Lord for you. By the, for the grace of God that was given to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. That by grace you were enriched. In all way, as the word of God saves everyone who believes, that through him is revealed the righteousness of God. So a person may walk from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And God showed mercy to you, the idolaters who had no relation with the things of God, when the gospel was proclaimed in Corinth, you accepted it, you became children of God, and you were blessed exceedingly with every exceeding blessing. And you were 
and all the mysteries of heaven were revealed to us so the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ was revealed to you so no, you were left behind by no gift of God <clears throat> as you expected the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ And he wrote this in 57. And the commandment of the Lord came. The Lord asked for you to leave Ephesus to go to Jerusalem. And as he was bound in the spirit, he decided to leave to, uh, from Ephesus according to the commandment of the Lord as he was submitted to the word of God where the Holy Spirit was testifying the bondage and sorrows and imprisonment while we were waiting for Paul but as he replied I do not care even if I die even though I do not I know I'm not going to die because the Lord has told me I need to give my testimony even to leaders and make it all the way to Rome but there was somebody whose name was Demetrius in Ephesus. And we read this in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And as he was bringing a lot of money to all the silver makers who were making uh, shrines for idols, and he stirred up all the craftsmen of his trade, and he stirred them up and he said, Look at this Paul who brought to uh, the statues of our goddess Artemis to nothing. And we are in danger so that Artemis will be accounted for nothing. And, and as they, and in Latin as Artemis is called Diana, um, everybody cried out and the whole crowd was stirred up and they were starting shouting great is Diana of the Ephesians and the whole sea was filled with confusion and was rushed in the theater with one accord and they even tried to lynch some of the brethren and as he was as the crowd was against his was against his brethren and ready to lynch them and he found himself in tremendous dilemma. Sh should he abandon his companions or should he to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit and go to Jerusalem? What would you do? And what, what kind of thoughts would you have? Should I leave them? Should I betray them? Should I abandon them? My brethren my family, the family of the Lord, or should obey the voice of the Holy Spirit? Should I obey the voice of my heart the f and the emotion which says go and die with them? Or should I abandon them and go depart to go to Jerusalem where the Holy Spirit instructs me to go to? The he found a position, a dilemma, a challenging one. And he despaired even of living in this sorrow that he found himself with. But how beautiful it is, the teaching of the gospel. But Paul made a steadfast decision. and He said, I will abandon them because I do not want to abandon the Lord. If don't go to Jerusalem, I'm abandoning the Lord. If I go to Jerusalem, I'm abandoning my brothers. I'm not going to obey the voice of my heart, but the will of God. I want to do what I feel is fitting, but what the word of God is asking me to do. This is a shocking decision. I don't want you to ignore, brethren, the 
We want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. But we made a steadfast decision of death. Yes, we are doomed for death. May the will of God happen. The will of God may be done. I'll go even if my brethren perish. Because that's the commandment of the Lord. He started going to Jerusalem. And by miracle, does God do miracles? Absolutely. There was somebody there. of the area of Ephesus. Then when he saw that crowd and they were shouting to and they captured these brethren. There was somebody there was somebody who was a minister of the city and this person spoke Um, this person this city clerk quieted the crowd and said men of Ephesus one man is there who doesn't know whether the city of Ephesians is temple the god of the great goddess but here we're in danger of being accused and as the devil had stirred them up they started calming down by the city clerk and as the city clerk calmed them down, and those who were ready to be lynched, they were free by the Son of God. And to whom do they owe the freedom? It is to the obedience of Paul, who didn't account the pain, the sorrow. The disaster that was going to happen, but he remained faithful to to what God had asked him to do, and they were set free. And now he writes his second epistle from Philip from Philippi, and as he go through, he's going back to Jerusalem. He's writing the second epistle. The one that we read that describes the great seven. That lasted five minutes. And when he was set free, and when he made a decision, a steadfast decision of death, I'm going to do what the Lord is asking me to do. And the Lord is going to manage everything in my life. Even though he was brought in a tremendous dilemma. Once I was found myself in an amazing similar position and I decided to ask the Lord and the Lord replied to me, do you, re do you trust me? I thought, who else can I trust? And as soon as I told him, of course, amen, Lord, leave everything, get out of this and I'm going to sort everything out. You don't believe you don't believe in Christ. Do you hope in Christ? If you hope in Christ, God is Almighty. He's got the solution to all your problems. Whereas there is a solution to the lynching of the companions of Paul. A few seconds it took by the city clerk to calm the whole crowd. And Paul comes down. To teach us why did God allow this? Couldn't God make them this something to uh, be avoided? But God does everything for our training and edification. 
to teach Paul. The things that he teaches Corinthians a year later in 58 AD. In the year 57 AD, you were enriched. A year later, Paul is saying something to the Corinthians is something even more important. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because He is the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. God is not only almighty, He's also merciful. Full of mercy, with multiple mercies, who comforts us in all tribulation. He is the one who is able to comfort us and console us in all tribulations, the sufferings that are bound in us. Whatever God allows in our lives, if you hope in Him who brings the circumstances to your life, He's able to console you. But why does He allow tribulation and affliction and sorrow in your life? Couldn't Paul be removed out of this scene? and be avoid and have God remove this dilemma from Paul because God no the answer is no because God wants to teach God allows his sorrow in order to teach them that he's able to console under desperate circumstances he's able to cons us uh, he's able to console and comfort Paul He's able to do the, the same thing for the Corinthians. So he confess the same thing to the Corinthians later on, one year later, in his second letter to the Corinthians. By th that, through the comfort that we have received, we're able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort of ourselves are comforted by God to comfort everybody who are in any tribulation. And the same strength is able to set you free and is comfort you and strengthen you and bless you just like he did with me because God is not partial he doesn't behave with different love to me than to you but to anyone who hopes in God he behaves the same power and strength at the same effectiveness <clears throat> As he was effective in setting me free. As he said, free, Paul. He's going to be, be effective to you as well from everything. This is what God is. Because. As. Our afflictions are abundant in our lives. Through the consolation we receive through those afflictions, we are able to console you. Why do I need to be in sorrow and affliction? That I, because I need to learn the lesson that the one who comforts me is God who is able to comfort you as well in your sorrow as long as you hope in him and call in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I afflicted for you? Why the Lord Jesus was afflicted? And why the Paul was afflicted in order for we to learn? Why was I afflicted that he did with me? He's able to do the same thing to you. Because only Christ has a solution to all the dilemmas and all the problems, to all the sufferings. Nothing's impossible to God. Everything is possible to God. And everything is possible to those who believe. So that whether we are in sorrow, we are in sorrow for your salvation. That through the patience, as we are suffering, and receive consolation, you're able to be comforted 
and you're able to be safe. And if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. So that the hope, this is a message that the hope that we have is certain and safe. This hope that we have is certain and safe for me and us and you. Everyone who hopes in him will never be put to shame. Do you hope? In Christ, Lord, grant me hope. Lord, heal my heart so I always have hope. In order to fix your heart and hope, you need to make a steadfast decision. Lord, Lord, I trust only you, Lord. I don't trust the other thing and the others and this and that and that. Because if you trust others, the Lord is going to ask you to go to others. When I was awakeness, do you trust me? Who else can I trust, Lord? And then leave everything the way the air is and I'll sort everything out. And I'm asking you to. Do you trust only Christ? This is a very serious question. Are you waiting help from somewhere else? David is proclaiming, I'm waiting my help from the mountains. And once my help is going to come, then he changes his perspective. My help is going to come from the Lord who created heaven and earth. What did God do? Great, majestic things. How simple it was for God to say. Saul had surrounded him. Can God do anything under those circumstances where Saul was about to kill David? It was surrounding him. My help comes from the Lord, and he's able to save me. And then a messenger came out of nowhere who came to Saul and said, The Philistines are against us. Come and help us out. And King Saul left David, and David was saved. In the circumstance of Peter, when he was in prison with the death sentence hanging over his head, is there a s- in a few hours Herod was gonna decapitate Apostle Peter. Is there any hope for Peter? But he knew my hope is the Lord. I hope in the Lord. I don't know what you're gonna do, but I hope in you, Lord. What is he able to do? He sent an angel. He told them, wake up. And Paul woke up. Get dressed up. And all the bondage and chains fell off. Peter, can these things happen? This is what Christ can do. What's impossible with man is possible with God. The door opened. And they went to the external gate. The external gate cannot open with any, but it opened by its own. And Peter went out. From the prison, and they walked two blocks, and the angel left, and Peter was free. And Herod woke up in the morning, he asked for Peter to decapitate him, and he murdered all his soldiers because he thought he had let him loose. But it wasn't the soldiers, the Lord said, Peter, free. Do you believe in God? Do you trust in God? I'm saying, Amen, Lord. Help me in my unbelief. Help me in my weakness. I am a weak person. That's who I am. I'm a pitiful person. Come here to tell you. Our boast is not that we are faithful and we are able to do everything. Our boast is, is the testimony of our conscience and a hope by the grace of the Lord, we were able, able to behave toward people and to you, Corinthians. This is our hope. We're not wise. We're not mighty. 
We're not able to do this. We're not able to do anything. Thus we came to you in weakness. <clears throat> Thus we didn't come to you as Paul says to Corinthians didn't come to you with strength but with fear and trembling because I came to idolaters to speak to speak about him who were never heard before, to speak and tell and proclaim that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. But my word, my message, did not happen with convincing words. It's not in, th in theology, with beautiful works. But my word happened with power, with testing as he blessed me he's going to bless you as he set me free he's going to set you free thus a faith of faith of people is not by the wisdom of people by, but it is by the power of God and so, our boast, and with great simplicity and sincerity, we came not with human wisdom, not with, nor with human strength or human skill, but the grace of the Lord we came to you. And we behave to you by the grace of the Lord. And by the grace of the Lord, people who are pitiful we don't have anything to show you I cannot show you anything what can I the only thing I can show you is my weakness what can I do for you I can do nothing the only thing I can confess the Lord Jesus Christ has done majestic things I haven't done them myself Yesterday, two kids had come to our home. They never heard the word of God. At least it was a couple. At least the girl. What could I have said to them? I prayed to the Lord. I said, why could I say to them? And I started telling them what the Lord had done in my life. As I was telling them what the Lord had done in my life, and the Lord was working in their heart. And I would see their face. They would see them starting believing. And the time came for them to leave. So up to this point, the, uh, the part B for next time. But I want to say something to you. Can you pray five minutes a day in the name of Jesus Christ? Can you go to your house and say, Christ, please manage my life, my family, manage my problems. Because she had amazing problems. Because I cannot do anything. And you'll see what God is going to do in your life. And they replied to me, I'm going to do this. Did I persuade her? I cannot persuade myself to do this. God, the word of God, who is able to persuade people. The word of God convinced me. The word of God is the one that gave me faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You cannot believe, but only by listening to the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And, and we have faith as the mustard seed. And the mustard, you know how small it is? You cannot even hold it. But then he can say to the tree and the mountain, be rooted out and fall into the sea. Because nothing is impossible with God. And nothing is impossible to the one who believes. Do I have faith? A oh, seed of master seed. You don't need to have faith as a mountain. Who has that? 
Not even faith, just a hope. Do you think? Do you think the Lord is able to do this? Do you think the Lord Jesus Christ would want to do this? Do you think you hope that the Lord would want? Can I try this? Can I hope? Can I try? That's what I said. Because I was a, a Christian Orthodox. Do you think those things are true? Can I try this? This confession of faith. Lord Jesus, save me. And everything changed. Everything became new. What the Lord Jesus is saying. Behold, I'm making everything new. Behold, I'm making everything new to the one who hopes in the Lord. But we need to hope on the Lord. Not hope in the minister and the great businessman. And of course, those people can help you, but not by placing your hope in them. But no one is able to help you. Hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because no one is able to help you. Hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be saved. You and your household. By having hope as a master seed is enough. But even if you don't have it, you can at least hope. You can even say... Do you think the Lord is able to help me? Do you think the Lord is able to... The Lord himself is saying, try me out. And if I don't open the floods of heaven to pour out my blessing to you so that you don't have any place to place it, leave. Try me, says the Lord. Do you think he's able to do this? Do you think the Lord is able to do this? Try me, says the Lord. And I will open the floods of heaven. In the dryness and the arid season, I'm able to pour out blessing, rain of blessing, so there will not be a place that will be able to store it. And thus, we don't behave according to the world. Not with skills, with powers of wisdom. But in simplicity, in without lying. Because the father of lies is the devil. If you lie, you're going to destroy everything. And simplicity and sincerity within the grace of the Lord. So that... We're not writing anything else to you. You're not reading anything else than what you understand. The messages of the sermons are simple. I'm not writing to you anything else than what you're reading. You're not reading anything else, but what do you understand? For we're not writing any other things to you than what you really understand. Now I trust you understand even to the end. As you also have understood, as in part, that was verse 13 and 14. And this knowing, as a result of all this, it results in boast. A boast is our fruit, just like it was in Paul's case. The work of God in your life. That's our boast. Look what God has done in my life. Not I, but the Lord. Look look how the Lord has done. Not I, but Christ. What did he do? He did everything perfect. But sorrow came again. And sorrow came in order to train me. Greater sorrow and affliction, so that with the affliction, solving this problem, I am able to solve all those who are in sorrow and console them. And what happens in the end, as a result? Blessed be God the Father, says Apostle Paul, who 
they will always enable in us to triumph in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying this myself. It's a gospel. Paul. It's a it's Paul who's saying this. But it's not Paul. It's the Holy Spirit through Paul who's saying this. He's saying, Blessed be that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort, who comforts us in order of tribulation, always able to triumph. To whom? To those who have hope and faith the Lord Jesus Christ and love through the Holy Spirit. That's a gift of God. What is faith? You are saved by grace. That is a gift of God. Give me faith, Lord. Receive my child. Give me faith, Lord Jesus Christ. Grant me to have that. Receive my child. Give me love of God the Father in my heart. And then the love of God, the Father, the Holy Spirit is poured in our hearts. Not by might or power, but that everything is happening in our lives through the Holy Spirit, who informs us with all certainty, the Lord of all the hosts, the Almighty God. I repeat, not by might, nor by strength, neither by wisdom, neither by skill, only through the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit is telling all of us, the Lord of hosts, and we're saying the Lord, glory to your name, please Lord, give us faith as a mustard seed. Lord, please make me to hope on the Lord Jesus Christ, only the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing else is is worth the hope for. Lord, fill me with your love. To love you, God the Father, with all the heart, soul, power, and strength, and intellect. The Lord Jesus Christ, with my power, soul, power, and, and strength, and intellect. And my brother, as Christ loved me. Amen. Hallelujah.